All right, thanks, Omar. So let's continue with more basis stuff. Um, if you look at this asset, it's uh, something we can get nowadays out of the... Ah, okay, hey, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to rush through this presentation in order to keep on the five minutes. Yeah, I'm Max from DGG. We are working on uh, an optimization software called Rapid Compact, and yeah, you'll um, see what we do uh, in a minute. <laughs> And we are heavily um, working on GLTF tools in this context. So this is an asset that we um, got out of the Zeiss real scan system, uh, which is pretty impressive because you can see that it already has all the PBR maps that we need. And it looks reasonably good. So this is around 100K polygons. It's an OBJ file. You can also get GLTF from them. It has high resolution textures. So the question is, can we already use an asset like that for uh, all kinds of presentation modes? And the answer is no. <laughs> for many cases, it's too heavy. So if you think about an AR app where you have a lot of assets, if uh, every shoe is 100K polygons, that's too much. And if you want to show it in an online shop, you will want this asset to be loaded in less than three seconds. So. This is basically the same story as if you are a professional photographer, you have a really good camera, take a raw image, and then depending on where you want to use it, in a catalog or on a web page, you will want to have a different resolution and a different format, right? So for 3D, we have automated the process of uh, like mesh reduction, simplification, and so on, uh, using our Rapid Compact software. And this is only one part, uh, like reducing the resolution of the actual mesh and textures. And then the second part is compressing this information for efficient transmission and storage, which is exactly the job that uh, like GLTF does in this context. So JPEG 4.3D fits quite well. And we have Draco um, for quite a while now. And as we have seen, there is something new coming up, which is basis compression via KTX2 for textures. And we have performed a small experiment with the Babylon team that provided the engine and renderer, so a tweaked version of Babylon JS. And we've evaluated different aspects, like uh, quality and performance. And here I'm just showing a close up. Um, and you can see more if you talk to me later or come by at our booth. So this is um, an in, uh, like inset of the like, glove model that you just saw on the previous slide, a uh, close up. And you can see that there are some blocking artifacts that we get through the basis compression, uh, which is uh, not surprising. Um, but we really found that um, with a reasonable resolution, these will almost be invisible because you will not, never uh, zoom in that closely in the final application of this glove, at least. And uh, regarding the asset size, so if we reduce the original OBJ by half and mesh and texture resolution with rapid compact, uh, we uh, and just converted to plain GLTF, we go down from 16 megabytes to uh, less than four megabytes, which is already good. But then if we apply basis uh, compression by KTX and Draco for the geometry, on top of that, we go from a four megabyte GLTF to 1.5 meg, which is, I think, pretty great. And as you can see, in this case, the texture um, size, the, like, so this is transmission size, not GPU footprint, was reduced by half just by uh, applying um, basis compression through KTX2. And here's another example, the well-known flight helmet. And this one uh, has already a low-resolution geometry, which is quite optimized. And you can see we can gain a lot going from, say, PNG to JPEG, from 50 to 12 megabyte, and then again from 12 to 6 if we apply um, KTX, so basis compression through KTX2. And I should say that it's a bit apples and oranges because it depends on the compression parameters. So we have used 90% um, uh, quality setting for the JPEG E library for the base color, for example, and we have uh, used 128 of 255 as a quality setting. It's a byte for the um, basis uh, compression here. And uh, I can, if, if you're interested, uh, talk to me and I can tell you the details. So. We also had a look at uh, um, encode and decode time. So decode time is really neglectable. You can directly push it to the GPU. But the encode time uh, differs quite a bit. Like if we compress these textures to JPEG and store them, it takes us one second. With KTX, it took us over a minute. And uh, this despite the fact that we already multi-threaded the basis compression. So I think there's maybe a bit of room for improvement 
although it's uh, acceptable that uh, KTX will just, uh, like encoding with bases will just take a bit longer. Uh, I think this is not going to change. Mm. And uh, I would like to conclude this now and just point you to a case study that we're just performing. So if you are working in e-commerce and you have assets like this, um, come talk to us or visit tgg3d.com slash ecom and we will uh, convert some of your assets. You can use them for arbitrary purposes. We'll provide you uh, with a report and we would just like to get your feedback. So if you're interested in automating workflows like that, um, you should check it out. And I would like to thank the Monopoly team for having created Basis, which is a really great um, texture super compression uh, scheme and obviously very useful. I would like to thank the KTX tools team uh, from Kronos around Mark Kello um, for providing the Basis SDK and the Babylon JS team around Gary Sue and Trevor Barron for having worked with us on this case study. So thanks a lot. Thank you.